Rock am Ring 2023, es ist Sonntag und ich freue mich auf unseren nächsten Interviewgast. Nothing Nowhere, Joe, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. How is it going? It's going great. I'm excited to play some music. Uh, we played Rock and Park yesterday and it was probably the best show we've played all year. So really? I'm looking forward to today. That's amazing. So the festival season is starting right now here in Germany. Uh, what shows did you play by now in that year? Uh, we've been everywhere. I mean, internationally. I mean, we've been we've been uh, played some headliners in Germany. Mm -hmm. We were over in in Australia. Um, we just got off tour with Wage War and Spite in the yeah. States. Um, but we're always the most excited to come back to Germany because you just can't beat the fans here. Okay, so you say this was the best best show ever oh, yeah. for that year. Oh yeah, amazing. That's good to hear. Uh, let's see that if Rock, Rock am Ring is uh, still better than Rock and Park because normally it is. Yeah, we'll see. I think the Rock and Park people would say no, but it is. We're starting beef here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think you played the first Rock am Ring in 2018 on the small stage here. Um, and since then, the music industry opened up perhaps again, like, uh, because I think that there's like a new wave of crossover music with hip hop and especially in your music, uh, what you do uh, coming from hip hop, bringing some rock elements to the music, some hardcore elements and all this stuff. Um, how do you perceive this? Yeah, I mean, um, it's awesome to see like just not only festivals, but just the general like music listener embrace uh like genreless sort of artists mm -hmm. i mean i'm no stranger to switching up and, and changing genres and experimenting um i think it's just like a it's what it is today like spotify like i just go into my spotify listen to my liked songs i could go from like a yeet song or a future yeah. song to like a knocked loose or something like that yeah. just back to back where it's like it's a healthier perspective where there's less gatekeeping and people are more apt to expand their horizons yeah. so i appreciate like people giving me a chance and let, let you know like my latest album void eternal that just came out it's yeah. heavier and it's different than what i've done but people seem to be into it so i can't complain the interesting thing is that especially rock am ring as a festival has to deal with a lot of negative comments all the time they have like a like a like a hip-hop or electronic artist in the lineup we just uh looked at the bands like 11 percent of the brand bands are just uh hip-hop acts the rest the rest is rock but there's still so many people hating about this gatekeeping like you, you said yeah. why yeah I, mean, I i i've never understood that perspective personally i just feel like people want to own things for themselves and they think it's their own special thing and they don't want outsiders to come in and, and infiltrate their safe space so to speak but it's like you know, if you have someone who's experimenting with heavier music or they're just bringing more yeah. ears and, and more support into the scene. So it's like, I'm all for it. And I think more people should have that perspective. I feel like it's becoming more of like a boomer and outdated mindset to gatekeep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly the thing I would uh, say about this, because I mean, I do not understand it. It's like angry old guy Facebook comments. Yeah, it is. And they're still on Instagram and TikTok as well. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned your new record, Void Eternal. Um, congratulations to it. Thank it's you. It's an amazing record. Thanks. Um, and you have a lot of features in it. A lot of different musicians, bands. Uh, CU Space Cowboy, Silverstein, P. Wentz, Roy Ramos. Um, how come? I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah, how come? Um, honestly, I kind of grew up in like a, a smaller like rap scene, but I was also in like hardcore bands and mm. post hardcore bands when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and what I noticed about the rap scene and like sort of the mixtape culture is rap and hip hop really embrace collaboration. Yeah. You know, it's not, cr it's, it's pretty often you'll see a, a record with. 12 tracks and all 12 of them will have a feature yeah and i just really like the spirit of collaboration and it's just like something that makes me happy as a musician and i just wanted to do something like i wanted to be like the dj khaled of like metalcore or something <laughs> <laughs> like, that's an amazing you know I mean? like, idea yeah and just bring together you know uh people that i admire from past and present you know what i mean like bands like under oath and silverstein and census fail yeah. but also having like you know connie from cu space cowboy and static yeah. dress and and stuff like that it's just i think it's 
I think it's rad. I think like community is really important, and uh, Void Eternal sort of embraces that aspect. So you met them on tour on a lot on a few of dates in the past. Or? Yeah, I guess just being in music, you just kind of meet people around, yeah. and um, a lot of them, like I said, I looked up to them when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and it's just cool that I, like they're sort of my peers now, and I can go to them for advice. You know. Um, It's just been cool, and uh, everyone seems to be stoked on it. So, which collaboration do you want to do in the future? I oh, mean, everyone man. is asking this, so I need to ask it. Dude. No, I know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, for me, uh, lately, like Mike Shinoda, Fred Durst, um, would be would be sick to work with Corn, like as a whole. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just sky's the limit. I'm just like trying to stay creative, and we'll see what happens. Okay, sounds pretty cool. I was. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. If, yeah, Mike Shinoda, Corn, Fred Durst, just massive. Give Legends. a call. Yeah, yeah. call <laughs> me up. Give me a call. Um, could you tell me? I mean, we we talked about this different um, styles of music you bring into your uh, to your music and uh, your audience. How? What is your typical audience? I mean. That's I, honestly that's an awesome question because I've been having the more I've been touring the more I've been experiencing just what my core fan base is and I can honestly say I have no idea. Well, if you were to tell me what the quintessential nothing nowhere fan is, I don't know. You know, there's it's old, it's young, it's different um, backgrounds, cultures. Um, We just played at Welcome to Rockville, which is a festival mm. in Daytona in uh, in the U.S. Yeah. And as we were leaving, this massive, like, jacked guy covered in tattoos, like, put his hand on my back. And he's like, hey, brother. And I was like, oh, my God. And he's <laughs> like, I'm a massive fan. Like, you know, I've been listening forever. And I was like, all right. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just like it. you never know what type of person's listening. And I think it's a testament of, like, I always switch up my genres. I try to stay fresh and – um I think the fan base is reflective of that. So I'm, yeah. I'm really proud of that and, and happy about it. I think this is also a key to success because um, as far as I see it, the music industry and the bands which grow, which get new audience, they are all moving in between genres. So, and they all yeah. have the different types of audience. So yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's just important like creatively too, like as an artist, like yeah. there's so much pressure to make your first record, you know, seven times in a row. But yeah. it's just, you don't grow spiritually or artistically like that. You exactly. Know? And so. later on, you're looking like, oh, the people are not coming anymore. Oh, why? You're writing all the songs, same again. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I get it. Um, I mean, What Eternal is released uh, in March this year. And of course, you're, you're touring with the, with the record right now. You do the festivals. Um, but what's next? Yeah, I mean, I've already started working on new music. I okay. can't help myself. Um, Sounds you know, good. Yeah, I just like it. It makes me happy. It keeps me busy, and um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm still on my journey as a musician, mm -hmm. trying to find my way. And I've I've really enjoyed playing heavier music, especially live. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't beat the feeling of opening up a huge pit and just watching people lose their minds. So, um, I've been working on a mixtape. I've been working on an acoustic album, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the works. So we'll see. Okay, so we can expect an acoustic album. We definitely can. Um, there's no release date yet, but um, I've been working on it at home at my studio. So Sounds pretty cool. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm excited. And which collaborations will be on it? <laughs> Who knows? Whoever's down, like I said, call me up. Okay. <laughs> I'm not hard to find. That sounds really, really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, Joe, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure talking to you. Likewise. I wish you an amazing show today. Hell Hopefully yeah. better than the Rock and Park trip. Yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's bring it. I'm excited. And yeah, thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure. You. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.